this kind of looks so weird to me. It looks like it's just gonna go straight into the material. There's a trick tool path, father and son, both murdering material. Oh man, Tyson's about to take a crazy cut right here. This guy makes some incredible parts on this machine. He is a legend when it comes to people at these big aerospace companies. They love when Tyson makes their parts. He has never ran a three quarter inch RBTE and taken a big cut without cooling. The truck is gonna start rotating and then you're gonna see some brilliant machining, especially when you get into the corners right there. This is a trick toolpath. And after the toolpath, Tyson is gonna show you exactly how to program this exact toolpath so you guys can duplicate it. Boom. Let's murder some material. Right now I'm doing a helical move at a 10 degree angle until we get down into the bottom of the material. So now the tool is at the final depth, we're one inch deep, and now the C-axis is going to be working together with the milling head to open up the diameter. <laughs> Boy is spitting some chips and look at that smile on his face. Look, look at the width on that cut right there. That radio is set. I'm doing a pretty big cut with a 60% step over. Here, come over here and get this. Look at all the blue chips. So right now the C-axis and the milling spindle are turning together and we're making a octagon with that. Good job, man. So good. It's like father and son, both murdering material. Boom. That was an awesome cut. And as you can see, all of a sudden, the chuck and the spindle were working together. Boom, boom, boom. And that's a trick little tool path. And Tyson is gonna show you exactly how to program that. So you can duplicate this application right here. I'd like to shout out one of our members, Animus 3D. Thanks for being a member. Thanks for supporting free education. If any of you out there want to support what we're doing, the easiest way to do that is by being a member. So I got our part up on Mastercam 2024. It's a simple part. We have a six inch diameter piece of 4140 steel. And instead of doing a hex, I have an octagon on the front of the part going one inch deep. And I've got the part already set up for the mill turn environment. For this toolpath, I'm going to go into our milling section and under 3D toolpaths, we're going to select OptiRough. We're going to select our machining geometry. So I'm going to select entities here. And what I want to select is all the walls of the octagon. So I'm actually going to hold down the shift key, the control key, and I'm going to click on one of my faces. And that's going to select all of the similar faces on my part. So just had to click one time and I selected the entire octagon. We'll hit end selection and all my surfaces now are green. Next I'm going to go into toolpath control. I'm going to select our boundary chain and we're going to select the outside of the octagon. So I have our chain and for the strategy I'm going to say stay inside of our chain. Now I'm going to select our tool. The tool we used was a 3 quarter inch Harvey 1 TE with a 30 thou radius. Select library tool. I'm going to open up my tool library and get our tool selected. We're going to be using a surface footage of 350 SFM. And for the feed rate, we're going to be using 5 thousandths per tooth. So 0 0.005 per tooth. That puts us at an RPM of 1,782 and a feed rate of about 35 inches per minute. The only other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the plunge feed rate to 15 inches per minute. For our setup, I want to make sure our C-axis face is selected and I'm going to be using tools in the upper left group. For our cut parameters, I'm going to change our step over to a 60% step over. 
for the step down. We're gonna be going full depth. I'm just gonna change that to 150%, puts us past our depth. And then under linking parameters, I'm gonna change the back feed rate to 150 inches per minute. For our entry motion, I wanna make sure that we're using the helix method. And I've got our helix radius set to 310 thousandths. Now for the plunge angle, it was set to two degrees by default. We're gonna change that to 10 degrees. And for the entry speeds and feeds, I'm gonna match this up with what I set for my plunge feed rate. I want a ramp feed rate of 15 inches per minute. And then I'm gonna look back at what I had my RPM set for this tool. So the 1,782, I'm gonna copy that. And then under ramp spindle speed, we're gonna paste that in. That should be everything I need, so I'm gonna hit the OK button and generate our toolpath. You can see we have our nice big helical with a 10 degree angle, but then once it reaches the bottom depth of one inch, it just starts going to town. If I was to post this right now and run the simulator, you can see that it's gonna do exactly what we want it to do with the tool moving and the C-axis moving. It helicals in, and then once it reaches the bottom depth, and then it starts moving in turn with the spindle and starts going upwards. And it just opens up that diameter and then it starts putting in my octagon. Now this is still a rough tool path. I'm staying off all the walls 50 thousandths. And because I drew the octagon quick and dirty, I don't have any corner radiuses in there, so this tool can't reach all the corners. But we put the shape in there, and I really just wanted to show this cool tool path that uses both the C-axis and the milling head working together at the same time to murder material off the part. So I hope you liked this video. That was some really cool machining. I wasn't really sure what to expect when I saw the tool going straight into the middle of the part. That was a pretty big depth of cut we were taking with the 60% radio. So I'm really impressed with the Harvey 1TE, the blue chips flying off. And of course, the SMX 3100 is a beast. So again, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, if you like what we're doing, if you like what we're about, make sure you subscribe to our channel, like this video, we have plenty more cool machining coming your way, so you're gonna to wanna to hit that notification bell, and I'll see you next time.